Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India solve the second example with the same concepts what we discussed earlier. So, example 2. So, consider a fixed wing UAV plan wing and tail plan form with a rectangular wing and tail plan form area rectangular wing and tail in plan forms with a with an area ratio of zero point two five, which weighs about two Five fifty kg. Uh, okay. And cruising at sea level. So, with the following data. find the neutral point or the location of neutral point i say np right neutral point b so to total lift curve slope of UAV, okay. so total lift curve slope of UAV, static margin location of CG with respect to leading edge. of wing horizontal tail volume ratio and tail setting angle. So, horizontal tail volume ratio. So, with the stability analysis we are trying to fix the geometric parameters, what should be the wing plan form area, what should be their location, what should be the tail volume ratios. So, that is the main aim here. Horizontal tail setting as well as horizontal tail setting angle.
zero lift angle or zero angle of attack lift coefficient of UAV. Right. So we are asked to find out zero angle of attack lift coefficient of UAV. So this is what we need to find out with the given data. So let us now look at what is the given data here. So C L alpha of wing is given as 5.056 per radian. So C L alpha of tail is given as 3.38 per radian. alpha at which CL is 0 is minus 2 degrees, C bar is 1.2 meters and the span is 10.5 meters, C M naught of the UAV is 0 0.09 Eight. Right. So, in our previous example, we got, we, we figured out what is CM0, but right now we are trying to find all these parameters assuming this particular CM0 is given. Okay. So, that is the difference. So, CM alpha is minus 1.0163. Per radian, 0 0.016. That's good enough. Tail efficiency factor eta of t is 0 0.89, which is 90 percent approximately. And then XAC of the wing is 30.32 meters behind the leading edge. So XAC of wing 0 0.32 meters behind the leading edge, and XAC of tail. X AC of tail is 2.95 meters, 9.25 meters, 2.93 meters approximately behind the leading edge of the wing. And we are also given the data about epsilon downwash is equals to 0 0.75 degree plus 0 0.375 times alpha. Okay. So, that means first thing that I would like to do is epsilon naught is 0 0.75 degrees I need to convert to radians which is approximately 0 0.013, so 0 0.013 radians right. So, de epsilon by de alpha it is same whether because radian degree upon degree or radian upon radian right. So, it will have an increment in a similar way over when you consider epsilon as a degree or epsilon as yeah so same you need to have similar units here and there so this is the data first of all location of neutral point so before finding out the location of neutral point i would like to address this second question so question b i am trying to address it first total lift curve slope right total lift curve slope cl alpha of the aircraft is as we know it's it's from the contribution wing contribution and with a correction factor from the tail uh, yeah for, as well as from the tail contribution with a correction factor here st upon s times cl alpha of tail 1 minus the epsilon upon the straight forward right just substitute the values here the cl alpha of the total aircraft is what is cl alpha of wing which is given as 5.056, we can say 5.06 or 56 plus eta is 0 0.89, 89 percent and st upon s is given by 0 0.25. So, the wing area ratio is 0 0.25 st upon s from the given data what we have is since 
एस टी अपॉन एस इज जीरो पॉइंट टू फाइव एंड वी आर टोल दैट दीज आर रेक्टेंगुलर विंग्स राइट इज इंट इट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई सी एल आल्फा ऑफ टेल इज थ्री पॉइंट सी एल आल्फा ऑफ टेल इज थ्री पॉइंट थ्री एट थ्री पॉइंट थ्री एट वन माइनस एप्सिलॉन बाई डो आल्फा इज पॉइंट सो फ्रॉम हियर यू नो डो एप्सिलॉन बाई डो आल्फा इज पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव सो सो सी एल आल्फा कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम विंग इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सिक्स प्लस टेल विद द करेक्शन फैक्टर वी हैव पॉइंट फोर सेवन राइट सो सी एल आल्फा ऑफ द एंटायर एयरक्राफ्ट दिस इम्प्लाइज सी एल आल्फा ऑफ द एंटायर एयरक्राफ्ट इज फाइव पॉइंट फाइव टू सिक्स पर रेडियो ओके सिंपल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन नो कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी नाउ लेट अस एड्रेस दिस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉट शुड बी द लोकेशन ऑफ न्यूट्रल पॉइंट नाउ यू कैन अप्रिशिएट दिस राइट सो हाउ लेस द कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम द टेल टूवर्ड सी एल आल्फा That's because that major majorly affected by this S T upon S. If this is one, then it is almost close to. So, point eight nine is like ninety percent of this, and without downwash, it is almost same, right? Isn't it? So, but because of this S T upon S, which in fact you decide based upon your the required tail volume ratio. Right? So, due to which your contribution by of C L alpha tail towards the C L alpha aircraft is very small here, right? and the location of neutral point here the so location of neutral point right okay so location of neutral point np okay so how can i find out uh, i don't have the data about cg here right or say if i have static margin then i'll be able to find it out directly by subtract adding sat static margin with the cg but i don't i neither have cg data or the static margin data all i have is a location of wing location of aerodynamic center of the tail and then so i have the corresponding lift curve slopes of wing and tail right am i correct and i know what is the area ratio of wing and tail which is 0.25 so with this data i'll be able to figure out neutral point right weighted average i use that weighted average formula which is x bar np is equals to cl alpha of wing times x bar ac of wing plus cl alpha of tail okay correct with correction factor eta of tail st upon s times cl alpha of tail times 1 minus do epsilon by do alpha is a correction factor due to downwash multiplied by the location of aerodynamic center of tail with respect to the leading edge of the wing upon cl alpha of wing plus eta st upon s times cl alpha of tail times 1 minus do epsilon by do alpha yeah okay so can i say this is my total cl alpha of the uav so this particular denominator is nothing but the total cl alpha of my uav right am i correct or not so i can directly substitute the value that i obtained here in the denominator okay so what i will do is x bar np is equals to cl alpha of wing upon total cl alpha of the uav multiplied by x bar its location corresponding location so this is a weight to the location right to the air location of aerodynamic center of wing plus eta st upon s cl alpha of t 1 minus do epsilon by do alpha so this is divided by cl total cl alpha of the aircraft right so again this is the weight is to x bar ac of tail which is its location okay so x bar np 
is equals to this equals to 5.056 Cl alpha 5.056 divided by Cl alpha is 5.526 multiplied by XAC location of aerodynamic center is 0 0.32 right. So, 0 0.32 upon C bar, C bar is given as 1.2 meters right. So, point, this is 1.2 meters plus point, so this is approximately point 0.14, point 0.47 right, is not it. So, point 0.47 upon C L alpha is 5.526 multiplied by x bar AC of tail which is again given by 2.95 meters upon 1.2 meters, 2.925 upon 1.2 meters, okay. So, from here I know what is x bar n p neutral point which is equals to 0.914 times 0.267 plus 0 0.085 times 2.438, okay. So, what do you mean by that? So, this particular ratio is the weight to the location, is a is the ratio of lift, lift curve slopes, you know, of the wing to the entire aircraft, am I correct or not? And lift curve slope of the tail to the entire aircraft lift curve slope of the entire. So, it is getting like the wing is having the major weight here. No, that is why X N P tries to have a major weight almost one towards its location, wing aerodynamic center location. That means, this particular term will try to pull the aerodynamic center towards it, because it has a more weight, you know. Yeah. So, but the location, see here you have only, here it is 91 percent, you know, almost it is it is almost 1 here right 100 percent it will it will it will try to pull the wing try to pull the neutral point towards it because of this. But here you see it is only about 9 percent which is 8.5 percent, but the length of the tail is what matters here right now. Yeah. The location of aerodynamic center of the tail is what making this to pull towards that pull towards the tail. So, the neutral point is now because of the weight to the location of the wing CG and the weight of lift curve slope towards the location of wing aerodynamic center here, okay. So, what it turns out to be somewhere in between this, these two locations, right, x bar np is 0.451. Can you see this? No. x bar np is 0.451. If you multiply by c bar, what is the value? Corresponding location is x np is equals to 0.451 times 1.2, how much? 0.541 meters from the leading edge of the wing. You see this is aerodynamic center of the wing is 0.3 meters. So, shall we draw this? That will make sense, right, is not it? Yeah. Say, if, if this is my fuselage difference line, Okay. Let us say this is my reference point or leading edge of the wing. Okay. So, the wing is located at a distance. So, wing AC aerodynamic center of the wing let us say is located at a distance here. So, let us say this is my AC of wing which is at a distance of point 0.32 meters. This is 0 0.32 meters, and the CG, or say the tail is now located. Tail is located at a distance very far from here, which is about 2.9593 meters. 2.93 meters. Look at that. This is just 30 centimeters. That is 2 292 centimeters from the leading edge. So this is far away. This is AC of tail, which is located at. 2.93 meters approximately, okay. Right. 
So, this is XAC of tail and the neutral point turned out to be it is somewhere here. Some, see, the, approximately half a meter. So, this is your neutral point which is 0.54, approximately 54 centimeters, half a meter. So, this is your NP. No. That means your CG for a stable aircraft has to lie ahead of NP. That is what we discussed. NP makes the system, if, if the CG is beyond this NP, it is a limit for CG, beyond which it becomes unstable, CM alpha becomes positive. So, before that, that that is the same case. For the wing alone, we saw the, the wing starts flipping back. As soon as the CG shifted back the aerodynamic center, which is the neutral point for a wing alone configuration, it starts flipping back immediately. Right? So, the CG has to lie close to this aerodynamic center itself, towards this point. Am I correct or not? And see the strength of this CL alpha of the wing contribution. So, it is pulling this towards it. Although the tail is at, tail have a greater momentum, which is about 2.95 meters with respect to leading edge of wing. So, but it has only a smaller momentum. But the domination is from the wing contribution, wing area. Isn't it? ST upon S of wing upon S is 1, but here S of wing upon S of tail upon S is 0.25, one fourth of it. So, this is what is like making the contribution of CL alpha of the tail very less towards the neutral point compared to. Am I correct or So, that is what is happening here. So, we figured out neutral point and the total lift curve. Let us talk about this static margin. So, let us talk about solution for this third question, third part of this question which is find out the static margin with this current CG location. Okay. How to find out static margin with the current CG location. Find the static margin. SM. So, static margin is equals to minus d upon d c l. Do we know that? Which is equals to minus c m alpha upon c l alpha of the total aircraft. In c l alpha of the entire aircraft is known, it is easy to find out static margin, right? So, c m alpha is minus 1.01632, such a long number, minus. 1.016362 upon CL alpha of the entire aircraft is about 6, if I am not wrong, 5.526, okay. 5.526 per radian. So, the static margin turns out to be 0 0.184, which is approximately 18.5 percent or 18 percent I should say. Okay. So, approximately 18 percent is the static margin of this configuration with this current CG location. Okay. So, let us move ahead to find out what is D, right. What is the D? Location of CG. Now, location of center of gravity with respect to leading edge of wing. What do you mean by that? So, I need to find out. So, you know what is NP. You now know the static margin as well. You find what is the location of the CG. Okay. So, say somewhere here, say this is my CG location and this is my X CG. Okay. You know by, by the definition of static margin, we have x bar n p minus x bar c g, right. This implies x bar c g or x c g is equals to x n p minus static margin times c bar, okay. So, since we, we want a dimensional quantity with respect to the leading edge, so I am I am trying to multiply that c bar. For, for this entire equation. So, x c g 
is x bar x n p which is 0.54 meters 55 centimeter 54 centimeters from the leading edge of the wing minus static margin is 18 percent right. So, 18 0.184 times c bar is 1.2 meters. So, 18 percent of 0.2 or close to 20 it is like yeah 20 percent of 1.2 meters. So, this is equivalent to 0 0.32 meters, 3 to 4 and the C G and the A C are almost same. very close. Yeah. So, very close C G and the aerodynamic center of the wing are very close here almost close. Yeah. If you have to have 20 percent static margin almost close to 20 percent then the C G of the UAV is almost close to the aerodynamic center of the wing here. Right. That means, there will be a very weak contribution of C L of the wing towards C L naught of the wing towards C M A C or C M naught sorry C M naught of the aircraft. Okay. So, let us go ahead and then solve this problem horizontal tail volume ratio. So, what is horizontal tail volume ratio? So, D E is a we need to solve for horizontal tail volume ratio. So, we know V H right S T upon S times X bar X A C of tail or L T upon C bar which is S T upon S L T is given otherwise you can say S T upon S L T is X A C of T minus X C G upon C bar. So, straight forward please substitute this and then this is 25 percent one fourth of the wing times so, this is 2.438 minus 0.267. So, this turns out to be tail volume ratio is 0.542, right. So, this is so this is a very good number, no? very good tail volume ratio 0.542. And the next question is about finding out the tail sitting angle. So, find the tail setting angle. How do you find this tail setting angle? You have C M naught given, right? You know C M naught, we know tail setting appears in C M naught, right? Affects the C M naught. So, let us write down that equation C M naught is equals to C M A C of wing plus C L naught of wing times x bar C G minus x bar A C of wing minus a eta S T upon S C L alpha of tail 1 minus dou epsilon sorry i of t minus epsilon naught multiplied by or you, you can directly say V H tail volume ratio I am writing in terms of V H here. Since we have already calculated what is VH, just substituting that there. So, I of t plus epsilon, right, is not it? Or minus epsilon? Minus epsilon, yeah, true, true. So, I of t minus epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is 0 for this or not? Yeah. So, from here I can say I t plus I t is equals to epsilon naught plus right I t is equals to epsilon naught plus 1 upon eta tail volume ratio C L alpha of tail okay, multiplied by C M A C of wing 
plus C L naught of wing times X bar C G minus X bar A C of wing minus of C M naught of the entire aircraft, is not it? Okay. So, from the given data you can substitute this and figure out that value what should be the I of t. So, consider a rectangular symmetric wing and tail, uh, it should be a symmetric, symmetric you know, rectangular symmetric wing and tail. Okay. So, please add this part here, consider a rectangular symmetric wing and tail, which makes CMAC is 0 and C L naught is of the wing is 0, right. So, what you end up having is epsilon naught which is I of t is 0 0.75 was given, right, 0 0.013 plus 1 upon 0.89 times tail volume ratio is 0 0.542, 0 0.542 multiplied by C L alpha of tail which is 3.38. So, this is equals to 0 plus 0 minus 0 0.0928. So, what we end up having is, so I of t is equals to 0 0.013 minus 0 0.0568, right. So, what is the value? I t is minus 0 0.04439, which is approximately how many degrees? This is in radians. So, so this is minus 2.5 okay. So, this is a tail setting angle you need to maintain in order to have this C m naught, right. This is the C m naught in order to have this C m naught positive you need to maintain this particular tail setting angle, right, which is minus 2.5 degrees. So, let us move on to the next question 0 angular of attack lift coefficient, right. So, you need to find C l naught of UAV. So, it is straightforward, is not it? C L naught of UAV is equals to C L naught of wing times X E G minus X A C bar of wing plus eta S T upon S times C L alpha of tail times I of T minus epsilon naught. Okay. So, but C L naught of wing is 0, is not it? Oh, I am sorry, I am sorry. Okay. So, please, please make this correction, just trying to write about C m naught. Now, this is C l naught of wing plus eta S t upon S, C l alpha of tail, I of t minus epsilon naught. So, C l naught of wing is 0 because we have a symmetric, symmetric wing and tail, right. We have symmetric wing and tail because of which C l naught of wing is 0. So, the C l naught of the total aircraft is from this tail contribution, okay. So, which is minus 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 2.5 degrees right which is approximately minus 0 0.0439 minus 0 0.013 right. so eta is 0 89% and 0.25 is st upon s this is 3.838 3.38 is the lift curve slope of tail multiplied by minus 0 0.069 right minus 0 0.043 minus 0 0.013 minus 0.056 yeah so minus 0 0.056 right so this equals to so if you multiply all of this what are you going to get so cl naught is equals to so so, the C L naught that I am going to have because of this is 
how much minus 0 0.042 so this is the negative CL naught contribution because of the tail tail setting negative tail so when wing is symmetric so at zero angle of attack you have negative lift okay if you have a minus 2 degree tail setting and so you may not be able to fly at zero angle of attack of course we have a symmetric wing there so you need to trim always at certain positive angle of attack there right or employ a wing setting angle right continuous wing setting angle when you consider a symmetric airfoil for the wing then you have to maintain a continuous wing setting angle okay and let's take up the final question so it's all together a performance question kind of no so find the trim angle of attack find the trim angle of attack and the corresponding lift and drag forces lift and drag forces as well as power required for the UAV for the UAV to cruise at sea level okay so assume cd naught is zero lift drag coefficient is 0 0.03 and oswald's efficiency factor of 0 0.9 okay so we need to figure out first the trim angle of attack from the given data for the same uav again we know we'll go back to the cm versus alpha for trim angle of attack right so we have cm naught we know cm naught what is the cm naught value for this aircraft 0 0.09 it's given 0 0.0928 so the coordinates at this point is 0 comma 0 0.0928 yeah and we know alpha trim here so this corresponds to alpha trim comma 0 at trim angle of attack the moment coefficient is 0 am I correct ok so I know the slope here d c m upon d alpha c m alpha is known what is the slope minus 1.01632 minus 1.01623 1 yeah for radian ok so by using the definition of slope, I will simply calculate what is the corresponding trim angle of attack here, right? So alpha trim is equals to CM naught upon minus, minus of CM naught upon CM alpha, isn't it? So what is alpha trim? CM naught is 0 0.0928 upon CM alpha is minus 1.01623 this is equals to 0 0.094 94 radians so this implies alpha trim is approximately 5.4 degrees okay so this is the trim angle of attack no 5.4 degrees I was able to find out that value. So I have this trim angle of attack and with this data can I be able to find out what is the lift and drag coefficient? What do I require to, to find out those? So first of all lift is half rho v square s times Cl, isn't it? This is half rho v square s times Cl and 
we need to know what is the cruise velocity as well as CL here. Because density at sea level is 1.225 kg per kg upon meter cube and we have wing area because B is given and S C is given, right? So, uh, I know S is B times C bar. C bar is nothing but so C throughout, no, it is a rectangular wing so C bar does not make any sense. It is nothing but root chord, tip chord, everything at every at a given cross section this will be the corresponding root, uh, chord, chord length. So, for a rectangular wing this is B times C bar which is nothing but B times C. So, this is 10.5 multiplied by 1.2 which is 12.6 meter square, okay. 12.6 meter square and then we have the area now we need to find out CL, right. The tot this CL is CL of the total aircraft, isn't it? TL of the to CL of the total aircraft corresponding to alpha 3 degrees, uh, 5.4 degrees trim. Am I correct or not? So, I can express this CL as of the total aircraft as CL naught of the total aircraft times CL alpha of the total aircraft times alpha trim, right? So, this is CL trim. So, this is equals to CL naught of the total aircraft we have calculated it as minus 0 0.05. How much is that? CL naught of the aircraft? Minus 0 0.042. Minus 0 0.042. Okay. Plus CL alpha of the total aircraft is 5.526, right? Multiplied by 0 0.94, it is in radians, no? This is in radians. So, let us continue working in radians. Alpha trim in radians is 0 0.094. So, what is the value? Zero point four seven seven. So, CL trim is 0.477. So, if you substitute CL trim there, you will be able to find out the lift, but we do not know what is the corresponding velocity, right. So, since we are cruising at sea level during cruise, we know lift is equals to weight of the configuration. This implies half rho S times CL trim is equals to W. This implies V for CL trim or V trim corresponding V trim is equals to root over 2 W or twice the wing loading upon rho C L for trim. So, this equals to Prabhjit, 2 times W 550. So, 550 kgs it was given. So, we need to convert it to Newtons. I am considering G as 10 meters per second square. So, so this is 5500 Newtons upon 1.225 since we are flying at sea level. So, density at sea level is 1.225 kg upon meter cube times CL trim. So, CL trim what we have is point, uh, point 0.477. So, quickly calculate the value of V trim. V trim is equals to 38.65. So, close to 40 meters per, so 39 meters per second, right? Close to 39 meters. So, if you substitute V trim in this particular equation, what I have is half 1.225 times 38.65 square, okay? Half rho V square times the area which is 12.7, 12 point, we just calculated it. 12.6 times 0 0.477. What is the value? The lift force acting is? What should be the value? Without even calculating that we should say, is not it? It should be 550 kg or 5500 Newtons close to that, maybe 5493 or something. How much is that? 5500 Newtons which is? 50 kg. We need to calculate that because we are in cruise. Lift should be equal to weight. 
there is no need to calculate that lift is equals to weight there you can directly say it and what is the drag so drag is equals to again half rho v square s times c d naught from the drag polar equation times k c l square so you substitute the value of c l here you are given c d naught and find out what is so if you do that what you are going to have is 0.5 times 1.225 times the reference area here is 12.6 half rho s yes, v square is 38.65 square okay half rho v square times cd not is 0.03 plus k we need to find out right isn't it k we don't have the uh, value of k k is equals to 1 upon pi e a r right so 1 upon 3.14 times what is e consider uh, so e is considered as 0.09 0.9 sorry 90% efficient and then the aspect ratio is b square upon s or b by c directly so b b is 10.5 c is 1.2 b by c is approximately 8.75 8.75 so the value of k turns out to be 0 0.04 0 0.04 right 0.0 so so 0.04 multiplied by cl square is 0.5 approximately or 0.477 square right so if you solve this the drag required is approximately 454 newtons or k yeah 454 newtons 454.74 no newtons so this is the amount of drag that is offered by the system when you are flying at this particular velocity in that particular trim condition okay so you need to overcome this drag by producing so much thrust if you are using a jet engine so if you want to use a propeller driven engine then what we need to find out is power required so can we quickly find out what is the power required for this condition right so if it is a jet engine yeah we can say we can talk in terms of thrust that need to be generated so let us say if we employ a propeller driven engine then we need to know what should be the power power what should be the power generated by the engine for this particular flight condition so what is that means we need to figure out what is the power required by the system which is drag or thrust required times the velocity of flight so the drag is 454 or 455 newtons clo closely which is 45 kg this is the amount of force you need to produce in the forward direction of flight so 0.7 newtons multiplied by 38.65 so this is approximately 17734 watts This is the amount of power that you need to produce to make this system. Is it correct? 17,574. Okay. Just check. So close to 17,574. Okay. Watts. So this is the amount of power that is required to propel the system forward if you are using a brushless motor. Uh, sorry, uh, propeller driven engine. Yeah. Okay. So. We'll quickly solve another problem, another example problem. Or we'll give that as a assignment. No. Okay. So we'll end up this lecture. We'll give that problem as an assignment. Soon we'll be demonstrating that. No. Do you remember? Do you can you recollect? So this neutral point. So let us say x and p bar is equals to x. AC of wing, uh, x bar AC or C CL alpha of wing times x bar AC of wing, isn't it? Let's try to erase this part. So it is not connected with this question. So I am talking about a demonstration that we are going to take up. So CL alpha of wing times x AC of wing, eta ST upon S, CL alpha of tail. 1 minus 2 epsilon by 2 alpha times 
x bar a c of tail right, upon c l alpha of wing plus eta s t upon s c l alpha of tail 1 minus dou epsilon upon r. This is a definition of neutral point, right? Isn't it? From the definition, we have derived this as a neutral point. So, if we consider, see, this is about wing and a tail combination. Right? Let us now consider a case we have identical wing and tail, same wing as tail. Okay. For example, if this is my wing, I'll have this as a wing as well as tail separated by an adequate distance. Right? Okay. What do you mean by that? I have same planform area okay am i correct so i have same planform area for wing as well as tail that means st upon s will be 1 okay so st upon s is 1 further i assume there is no downwash no downwash effect is minimal it is separated by very large dis distance you know that means eta is 1 because half rho v prime square will be effectively half rho v square itself and then this term disappears this becomes 0 right am i correct or not so that means this becomes 1 and this term becomes 0 okay i'm sorry yeah not this one that's epsilon term becomes 0 yeah. so and lift of wing is nothing but lift of tail because we have two identical identical wings so in that case what happens is this is nothing but cl alpha wing taken common out x bar ac of wing plus x bar ac of tail why because cl alpha of tail is nothing but cl alpha of wing and the correction factor is 1 right now isn't it so there is no correction factor i'll take cl alpha of tail which is equals to cl alpha of wing common out of this numerator and then what you have is twice that of cl alpha of wing two times of cl alpha of wing so this cancels out what I have is x bar neutral point as the midpoint of the distance or the midpoint of separation of wing and x bar ac of tail upon 2. Am I correct or not? It is the midpoint. Can you see this? So, this becomes neutral point becomes the midpoint of these two. And we know if the CG is ahead of this neutral point, then we have CM alpha negative. That static margin is positive. CM alpha is negative. If it is behind the neutral point, CM alpha is positive, which means the aircraft behaves unstable. So, we will try to demonstrate that okay, in the next lecture. Thank you.